Hey, Julian. Um, obviously, you look at the boxer. He played 105 snaps yesterday. Uh, what does that feel like the next day? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, somebody told me that my snaps must have been high. I was in to lift this morning, and uh, I mean, I feel sore, but I don't know. I feel like I always feel sore. So, I don't know. I try to go hard when I'm in there, and, yeah, we'll see We'll see how I feel the next day. And so, yeah, it's kind of crazy. To, I think that's the second time in my career I've been over 100. What was the other time? I can look it up. But I think it was maybe my rookie year, maybe second year. Maybe my rookie year because it was against the Eagles, at the Eagles, and I was starting. But then I was also on all four phases of special teams. And so, yeah, that added up real quick. Gotcha. And one last one other thing, uh, just about your tackling. You know, I don't think you miss very many. It seems like you're always kind of like good form tackling. Just like, it's all more of an observation than a question, but like, where does that come from? Like, why are you such a good tackler, I guess? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I appreciate that. I, I don't know. I take pride in it. I feel like if you kind of analyze everything I, I've ever said to you guys for the past four years, I always say I take pride in my tackling, and I, I think it's serious. I attribute it to being just a, a kid playing pickup ball all the time like that it's like you got to be a good tackler if you weren't you were seen as like the the soft kid in the neighborhood and so I take it seriously I work at it I really grind away at it and yeah in college as a corner I was probably the most efficient on my team it goes back to high school um I think it's just you know not being afraid to be physical and also I don't look it but I I pack some strength I really kind of go at it in the weight room and so I'm able to uh you know bring I don't know, deceive people on what I bring to the table on tackles. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a whole mixture of things, but I really grind at it. Thanks. Paul Short. Hey, Julian. What's up, Paul? Hey. Um, um, what do you make of a tie? What do you make of what's going on in the playoff race here? I know you guys are focused on the Eagles, but, you know, you're a sharp guy. You know what's going on in, in, in the conference and the division and everything else. And, the fact that after the Eagles, you have the commanders again with maybe a sense of unfinished business. I mean, what's what's going through your head right now about what comes next? Yeah, it was weird. My first tie. Um, and I don't know. It just felt like the game just ended. It was very weird. I don't know if I've ever been in a situation like that before. Um, and so, yeah, I think we put ourselves in a good position uh, for this game, for the game uh, against Washington that we tied. But yeah, we just didn't make the play that needs to be made, and there's a few out there for us. And so, if you make, you know, if you feel like you make one of those, the game goes a different way. And so, we do get another shot. Obviously, uh, we're still in this thing. The all hard work we put in all season has put us in the position that we still have, you know, opportunities in front of us. And so, yeah, we're taking it as that. You know, we, we recover, we try to get guys back, stay healthy, but we take it, you know, as we still have opportunities in front of us. You know when you win a game, you help yourself. You yeah. know when you lose a game, you hurt yourself. Yeah. What did you guys do to yourselves moving forward after that game? I think in the building, it kind of felt like a loss. Um, you know, it's better than a loss. It's worse than a win. It, it felt like a loss to a lot of us because we're competitors. We felt like we should have won that game and um, with the opportunities that we were given. Uh, but that's, you know, I, for every for every game you feel that way. Um and so, yeah, I think we just chip away at it and grind away at it, and we get another chance against them, but we have an opportunity in front of us with the Eagles. And so it's the energy is the same. Dave's is pretty consistent in how he is after win, losses, or now ties uh, in addressing what we did well and helping us you know, address and correct what we didn't do well. And one last thing. From what you know about the playoff scenario, how do you think the tie affects you? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I... You know, usually I'm I'm pretty analytical and kind of understand all that stuff, but I'm not fully sure the full breakdown of these last five games. Uh, I just know we there's some wins out there we need that we need. Thank you, Brian Dunleavy. Hey Julian, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. Uh, before I get to my question, what's up with the sweatshirt? Is there a reason for that? Oh, uh, was it uh, Alcorn State versus Jackson State? Uh, just, you know, the creator of this hoodie was a, a, a black artist. And so I got this just to kind of support them and support black owned businesses. Uh, yes, yeah, a nice little vintage, uh, crew neck. I'm a fan of crew necks. If anybody's looking for a Christmas gift for me for the, the holiday season. And so, yeah, that's what this is. 
I'll pass that on to your wife for you. Uh, um, <laughs> what, Julian, what uh, uh, what'd you think of the job Nick McLeod did? I mean, we made a big deal about you playing every snap, but Nick McLeod was a guy playing no snaps not, not long ago. <laughs> uh, the job he did settling in there at number two corner. Yeah, Nick's a good player. I think when we brought him in and – Give it gave him a, a few opportunities uh, early on. We everybody quickly realized how good of a player he is. Um, and he's a guy who's definitely on the rise. He he he's physical uh, when he needs to be. He's good in coverage. He's fast, and so he has a lot of ability to him. And so yeah, I think going into the game, we felt I felt extremely confident in him uh, because I know the type of competitor he is. And so he has that way about him that gives people confidence. Uh, and so yeah, we I mean we're looking to build off of. His abilities because right now we need it and then the flip side of that obviously when a guy plays that much somebody else doesn't play Rodarius didn't play and certainly seemed upset about it on Twitter as a captain as a guy in the secondary did you pull him aside did you say anything to him about keeping his head up about vent frustrations on social media any, any kind of conversation between you and him that you could share you know, we didn't have one on one. Uh, we kind of talked to the. We're pretty open uh, in this building uh, in our position groups, and so the reality is, and uh, it, it fluctuates now with, with a lot of guys up and down. You know, matchups are just different each week, and so we some guys had to step up. He wasn't really training in some positions, and like you like I said, Nick McLeod has been showing a lot. It doesn't mean we feel any less about Rodarius. Rodarius, and he came in today. We just kind of locked in on the film. He had good energy for us on the sidelines yesterday, and so it's a tough situation. I've been there before. Um, yeah. But, you know, you stay resilient because you know your time's coming, and he's a really talented player, and so we're going to need him down this stretch for sure. Thanks, Joey. Thank you. We'll take one more, Art Stapleton. Hey, Joey, what's up? What's happening, Art? You know, you've been a part of teams before. I mean, you go back to college, you guys knew what it was like to – to be in a championship hunt, you know, you go, you go for a, for a playoff spot, you try, you know, you know, the meaning of each game, you don't really put the stakes aside. You kind of focus on the stakes of those games. Now it seems like, you know, the stakes are here for the first time for you guys. And you, you know, you want the week to week focus. Is that a strange feeling to not throw the standings up on the board and kind of zero in on, okay, this is what we need to do this week versus this is what we need to do next week. Like your mindset, how you know, does that appeal to you, or are you one of those guys that loves to kind of attack? You know, okay, if we do this and they do that, and you know, here's where we stand. Because you said you were an analytics guy, so I gotta imagine if someone threw the playoff possibilities on your on your stool in front of the locker, you'd be the kind of guy who would look at them and not really be distracted by anything else. Yeah, I think as a leader of this team, I gotta have some sort of a big picture mindset on things. Um, but for the day to day, for guys who haven't been in this position, for guys who, um, you know, are looking to me for a way to feel about you know this this hunt and these last five games, I I try to keep it as minimal as possible and just kind of focus on guys just getting better each week. You know, say we didn't tackle well this game, let's work on tackling this game. You know, and stuff like that, and that keeps a sharp focus um, on uh, what we have in front of us. And so yeah, there's opportunities right now for what we have. Um, and I, I see it sometimes, and I, I kind of know what, what the situation could be. But, you know, I – taking away from this past game, our energy was really good. Um, we put ourselves in great positions. We got, you know, that the turnover after halftime, which I'm really excited about because, you know, the game prior we didn't start fast in the second half against Dallas. And so stuff like that is stuff we need to build on and kind of get back to. Uh, our third down numbers on defense are really good this game. And so just things like that, I think I was stressing what we needed to get to. We wanted to win, obviously, but the captain in me was kind of gauging and scoping out our energy and the things that I thought we needed to get back to. And so going forward, we got to keep doing that, and it'll, it'll, it'll fall our way. Kind of like what you said, just following up on that, is there almost a, a compartmentalization of it where there's a group of guys on this team, whether it's the leaders, the captains, that can look at big picture and see where you're at, but also when you step inside that locker room and it's the full 53, you kind of have to deal with it a different way? 100%. And, you know, if you're running any organization, it's important that you keep a majority of people on that on that short-term focus, short-term goals, 
um, and then you know it creates a long term uh, effect. And yeah, I'm, right now we're I'm a part like I said I'm a captain. I'm a part of that group that needs to look at things going forward. Um, and that's been going on the whole year, whether it's scheduling stuff and that's just kind of generally how it is. Um, and Dave's has done a great job of keeping us focused on each week to week, but also letting us know, I mentioned before, how we quarter out a season. And so we're doing really the third quarter now. Uh, we didn't play as cleanly as we wanted to, as we as we did in the first quarter, the second quarter. So now this fourth quarter of the season, we got to lock in and really get what's in front of us.